Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women as ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today is one of India's great national icons, a national inspiration. He climbed Mount Everest in 1965. A few months later was struck by a bullet and was uh, physically challenged. He went on to pursue his many interests, the many dimensions of his personality, continuing his passion for mountaineering, for sports, but above all, demonstrating to us as a nation, to a people, the possibilities of adversity turning into triumphs. He's currently the president of the Indian Mountaineering Foundation, heads the Development Council, holds many of official positions, uh, but has done most of his significant work, perhaps, for the disabled through the Indian Spinal Injury Center in Delhi. I'm delighted to welcome Major H.P.S. Aluvalia, a national inspiration. Uh, what inspired you? You know, you were this soldier in the field of battle defending India. You conquered Everest. Uh, most people, you know, after that would have spent, you know, quite some time basking in the glory of uh, being you know, a member of the first team that went to Everest, but here you were on, on, on the battlefield. Uh, what has driven you, what has inspired you to keep going? Uh, I, actually, I'm not one of those, you know, who would uh, hang his boots and then keep admiring that this is what I had done. No, what is done is done. What is there in future for you to see and to do? You know, that keeps going, you know. But even just the, the, the first doing, in yeah. the sense that, you know, the, the first time you really sort of came into the news was when you, you, know, you went up to Everest. And so there have been these many peaks to conquer. I mean, some of them literally like the mountain, others, you know, the, the, the peak of your uh, you know, disability. Uh, but what, is, what, what has been the motivation? Is it sort of helping others? Do you want to set an example? Uh, do you want to stretch yourself? What is the force that drives No, well, I would say, you know, it's the course of events that take place. For instance, now, uh, when I climbed Everest, so I came back. So my CEO called me up. He said, look, just like that, he was talking, look, congratulations, you did a good thing, this, that, and the other. And now there's another adventure on the field. So why don't you come? You have never faced or seen the war. So we are all in it. Why don't you come? I was very young, so I said, okay. So I went there. So both of us, we were involved and, uh, you know, I got wounded. But then uh, I was, uh, you know, unconscious for some time. And then when I regained consciousness, I knew the seriousness of the situation. And here was the thing that nobody knew anything about rehabilitation, what paraplegic is. And I was being shunted from one hospital to the other till some uh, mountaineer friends, Lord Hunt, in fact, told us that there is a center called the Stoke Mandeville Center in UK where, you know, people like me, uh, you know, get uh, treated or whatever it is. So then when I went there, I understood the meaning of rehabilitation and how people on wheelchair, because army will continue to get gunshot wounds, you know, so many others. So then there was a little idea that why not such a center could come and, and be made in India. So I requested the Ministry of Health. I met, met so many people years past, past, and then finally I realized it's not going to work, so let's start ourselves. So this is how I was sort of, you can say, m motivated or forced, and we took a decision to start a spinal injuries, first register the society, and then slowly, slowly things worked in our favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I would tell you that I started the center with just 150 rupees in my pocket, mm -hmm. and today it is uh, worth a uh, uh, thousand crores. Mm -hmm. So this I think is how the, out. Uh, the thing that I'm, I'm sort of trying to, to, to reach out to and understand is that uh, you're different because uh, a lot of people in circumstances like these would just give up being depressed and, mm -hmm. and, and feeling miserable and say life has come to an end. Mm -hmm. And then not only did you go on to solving or, or, or working to helping yourself and to getting out of that mental state, but uh, began to engage in the welfare of others. And it's also interesting that, that uh, you are today not just looking at 
the issue of disabilities and how other people can help, but you have retained your passion for the mountains. So that is also a passion that hasn't been given up, uh, which, uh, you know, now we read, of course, that, you know, uh, 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 people who are, who are sort of without both legs uh, have climbed Everest and, 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 and the scenario has changed dramatically, largely because of technology and, and yeah. what have you. But you have retained that spirit. Is it because you're religious? believe in others, you psych yourself up, what happens? How do you, or is that just the way your genes are? Uh, no, I would say, <laughs> I would say everything com combined. Basically, you know what you get the values from your parents and your, you know, other people that time. And uh, secondly, that, that mountaineering, when you, when you climb the Everest, you know, there's a saying that you're never the same again. You know, you are a changed man, you're a different man. You think more philosophically you think more about others you know and if I have to have and pick up an argument with you I'll say okay sorry chum it's my fault and that is the end of the thing and then helping others if you help what I have found that if I have helped today somebody helped him in, in getting him treated and if he doesn't have the money paid him the blessings that he gives you it's tremendous it's just tremendous to see a man that I have put him back to his job, it is tremendous. And uh, then people like you and others, they come and help you. All right, what do you want? We do that. Italians came to me with, got a help of about $10 million. And uh, you see, this is how you keep going. When uh, uh, There are two ways for a person like me. Either I should stay at home, brood, cry, and uh, uh, I know nobody will come to you. So your life would be very tough. It's better to get out and face the world, mm -hmm. whatever their realities are, mm -hmm. and see where you stand or where you go. Mm -hmm. So these are the, the interest. Uh, it is the interest that you have kept up, as you said, mountaining on one side, mm -hmm. because that has been my pa passion. Mm -hmm. if, if I don't climb mountain, at least I could go into the mountainous area mm -hmm. and do something, you know, be it for environment, be for, you know, expeditions, etc. Mm -hmm. And the other one is these uh, people to rehabilitate the persons with disability. What is, uh, you know, let's use this context in a sense to, to educate some of our uh, uh, audience. Uh, you know, spinal injuries um, means that you're really incapacitated, you lose sensations generally below the waist. And uh, there is a lot of, you know, press reports, stem cell research, you know, the miracles may happen. Uh, what kind of work do you do at the at your center uh, when you say rehabilitation and you also talk there about you know holistic medicine you're looking at beyond just the injury you're looking at, mm, the, at, at, at the total total being so let's start with what kind of possibilities now exist for people with spinal injuries as opposed to say 10 years ago you see 10 years of uh, not 10 years about 15 20 years ago if a man has been spinally injured be it through a bullet wound, be it climbing trees, or accidents, there, is, uh, there wasn't much hope. In the sense that he will lie, he will not know what to do. But today, the concept of rehabilitation has been brought, and our center, we emphasize a lot, and we've got good results. Rehabilitation means a number of things. Suppose somebody is hit in a car or gunshot, there has to be a medical input. That is called the medical rehabilitation, which means you should have excellent doctors to do a very good medical intervention. It, it, it may be a very high order of surgery to a spine. Well, that also should be available because if that is not done, then the further process of rehabilitation will not be complete. So we have the best of those doctors there. They are trained or they, they now even go and oper operate uh, in, an, in other countries because we have done, you know, um, most intricate operations on spine. But also, our doctors are also trained that it is not necessary that everybody should, who has a uh, spine problem has to be operated, no. Uh, out of 10, maybe seven do not require. So our doctors would say. Then after that, once he, rega once he gets back to this thing, then, he, then he's put into a rehabilitation department where there, there will be a psychologist, maybe a clinical psychologist, counselors, and physiotherapists, occupational therapists, they take on. And within that specified period, they try and whatever you have lost the use of limbs, okay. But whatever is left, how to make use of them. 
to try and put him back for his what if he was a student we've got a boy from Dune school we've got a boy from many other public schools we put them back and they're scoring the usual and doing well mm -hmm. others whatever his job was so our job is that and we make sure so far we have about almost 80 to 84 percent those who go back and are are being well rehabilitated and doing their job mm -hmm. then now we are also we are all the time looking at how we can you know bring relief pain etc you talked about stem cells mm -hmm. there uh, there is there are a number of organizations all over the world doing research on stem cell but uh, one cannot say that there has been a concrete result or i could not even say that say tomorrow definitely they will be but in future yes there is a hope mm -hmm. but we tell them that just don't wait for that time get on with your get life get on with your life mm -hmm. do the uh, kind of a um, uh, rehabilitation exercise that we do now the other thing that we have also started is um, these um, uh, aromatic oils mm -hmm. now there's a very good uh, place where uh, old herbs are grown in uti mm -hmm. etc mm -hmm. and we get them they are pro processed in holland and we have started using them on these patients and for backache, mm -hmm. for spondylitis, arthritis, mm -hmm. and those who don't get, you know, sleep or disturbed. Mm -hmm. So we are using all possible things mm -hmm. because there is a lot in the traditional medicine which we need to pick up now. Mm -hmm. And combined with this physiotherapy, mm -hmm. we've got hydrotherapy pool, which the water is heated through solar energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our whole idea is to get on, get new things. To use a, a complete, complete comprehensive these things. treatment. I, to, to us, the patient is a VBIP. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. watching a conversation with Major HBS Aluvalia, the national icon, climbed Everest, and has been working for the rehabilitation of victims of spinal injury and anybody with disability, really. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Major Aluvalia, a national icon and in some ways who really needs uh, no introduction. Uh, you know, when I describe you as, as, as a national icon several times, it's, it's really no exaggeration because uh, your story is a, is, is a familiar one. Your face is a familiar one. Uh, I think we grew up in, in, in the stories of your heroism, not just on, on, on Everest, but in, in, in after Everest in a sense. Would you say that, that your journey of, of triumph has really been a far greater one because of the injury and what you have achieved and done and contributed after uh, the, 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 that, that, that process? Yes, to some extent, because if, say, I was not injured, even if I had climbed Everest, I could have never looked at the disability side. So that is why I made a statement earlier that sometimes force of circumstances make you, you know, do some of the things which you may have been destined to do or otherwise. And they, then they bring you. Because if uh, I feel that you may take anything that you want, but if you have your heart in it, if you have your mind in it, body and soul, you will succeed. Mm -hmm. There has never been touch wood any project that I have failed. Because I don't put the, the financial aspect in front. I don't run after money. So if I do a social cause, I'm not looking at money there or something. I, I have noticed that the money follows you. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced self-doubt, uh, anxiety, fear? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're, uh, we envy you. <laughs> That's never. almost superhuman. <laughs> never, 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 never. Uh, is there something that you just feel that you grew up with, you were born with? Or is it something that you have cultivated because you feel that there is no value in fear mm. and so you have resolved and you have become yeah, that way? Cultivated because, say, if you want to do a thing and you work towards it and do it, you get uh, you tremendous confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that you must have faith in yourself. Uh, I won't be one who would uh, judge myself by what you say or he says. I'll judge myself for what I would say. And is that related to saying that, well, I've made honest effort. Yes. Or what is the criteria? Is yeah. that it? Yes. <laughs> what I made. Because I tell my staff, you know, whenever I said, look, you have competition from yourself. You compete with yourself for every job that you have and, and see, them, then see the results. Mm -hmm. And it, it is there. 
you give your workers freedom decentralize your thing have confidence in them and you will get amazing results so if there haven't been internal obstacles and challenges what have been some of the key external ones prejudice indifference what what has been uh, you have achieved so much what have been some of the things that you have had to work specially hard to overcome no 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 i won't say that there were no challenges there have been challenges for everything but you know again mountains teach you to face the challenges and with the same spirit be it a hospital be it expedition whenever the challenge uh, would come well i face squarely i meant in terms of the external challenges that okay. you know you want to set up uh, say you want to set up a hospital you mentioned mm -hmm. that there was a gr you know there wasn't an enough of a response from the system and so you managed to get you know uh, the italians and and and, and foreign support and, and you did it mm. so what were some of the the kinds of uh, difficulties that you had with the other things that you've done well, indifference uh, prejudice no because you see right, rightly so <coughs> and they would say look he is uh, <coughs> not a doctor what what the hell he knows about hospital but they didn't know that i spent 3 years in various hospitals so i know from patients point of view what an hospital would be but i didn't let those things deter money was a was 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 a problem but then you learnt a knack how to raise money how to raise funds so that again was not because i was not raising for myself if i had done something <coughs> that all right i do the hospital quietly put money for myself or this then i am dishonest then i am not going to achieve so taking these things these principles as a guiding principles of your of your or the philosophy of your life i think this is what has been successful and there has never been anything very major kind of a thing mm -hmm. i have been faced with so many you now i mean reported to prime minister of that time and this that and the other so they had a thing now why why have you got so much uh, land and this that and the other mm -hmm. but um, you you could answer those so this the, the, these things uh, na, uh, even if they are there they don't deter you mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. You're watching a conversation with Major HBS uh, Alavalia, uh, the Everest hero, the hero for the disabled. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to a continuing conversation with Major HBS Alavalia. Uh, you have also done other remarkable things. You traversed the Silk Route. Uh, you're about to go up to the source of the rivers, the Brahmaputra and, and the Satluj. Um, you're also a, a, you know, sort of a, a, a passionate environmentalist. I guess that comes from your experience uh, uh, with, with, the, with climbing of uh, Everest. Uh, there are so many dimensions to, to, to the difference that you want to make uh, to the planet. Uh, tell us, do you sort of still long to, uh, I don't know what, go up Everest again? No. In some ways, with, no. with all the support no. of technology no. that's no, happened? No, no. I've been to Everest once. Even if I had otherwise, I wouldn't have gone. So what, I what, like what, what are the other mountains to climb? I don't mean the literal mountains. Well, what the, are the other challenges that you feel? There are a lot of things, you know, like say if I take in health, my, um, I would like to bring health care to the far-flung villages in the Himalaya because they do not get any any kind of a health, uh, any kind of a medical um, facilities. Because A, inclement weathers, n no doctors, be it government or the otherwise, would like to go there. And so, one other thing would be that I would be working on would be how to, you know, the entire hospital made into a kind of a small um, mobile kind of a thing and take the services to them. You know, that is, that is one thing. And secondly, I am very concerned about the um, effect of global warming on the, on the on the Himalaya particularly because ours is the youngest no doubt but the largest chain now there are external factors globally which affect which of course we don't have any um, there's no power that we can do it but internally now today uh, lakhs and lakhs of vehicles are flying in the Himalayas itself as you know you've been emitting any amount of emissions now this emission is so dangerous that here is the emission and here are the snow clad peaks. They are creating a devastating effect. Government has to wake up now to put CNG. They have to stop the falling of the trees because they burn them. That smoke also goes and adds there. So many things that has to be done. Water is depleting. Ganga, you know, you've read about Ganga, 
that is not going to be the garbage and, the garbage and so many things. But what, what but do you hope to achieve by your your missions, by your travel to or, or visiting these places? Uh, it's more than I don't know what word to use. You know, it it it, it seems strange to say that you you know you travel to the, <laughs> the source of the rivers because it's almost like another expedition. You're, you're leading, really going on an expedition. Uh, but what what? What is the intent behind no, this? No, intent behind is that this is a job, I think, as a, as a President Indian Monitoring Foundation, that uh, we organize expeditions. We have been organizing expeditions. But I think a time has come that major expeditions, everybody is organizing because various clubs have been developed. Now, we should now look toward the scientific expeditions. Now, areas where, say, water is very important, Satluj and Brahmaputra are very big rivers. They feed more than a... I think a billion plus people, nobody knows what is the condition, what is the condition of glaciers, nobody even knows the exact source of these rivers. So we thought this will be a very good study for four or five years because nothing has been done for 100 years. See, So these are the innovative new things where others can't. Those who can't tread where well, well we should go there. So in a sense that you're going, you're, you're actually going to the location of where the impact of global warming is very, very most happy. visibly happening yep, yep. Uh, and uh, there will be a human presence there as opposed to just satellite imagery yeah. and, and photographs and, and so you will then bring back uh, sort of hands-on live uh, data in a sense. Yes. No, we'll have scientists. Mm -hmm. The Wadi Institute of Geology, their scientists are going to be given the job. Mm -hmm. uh, Indian Mountain Foundation will only work as a catalyst, mm -hmm. take these people, help these people, provide everything mm -hmm. and the Chinese scientists are also joining them. So they are the scientists who know, you know, what is the receding glacier, what are the, uh, what is the water discharge, etc. So we will get back um, a, a report to know where, where we are. You know, when I was asking you whether you were planning to, or thinking of, or dreaming of, uh, you know, going going up to Everest again, it was also to look at uh, in, in in what ways your passion for the mountains and your passion for the disabled, in some ways, may come together. Uh, by encouraging uh, or, or setting an example uh, for the disabled to climb literal mountains and not just metaphorical mountains. Uh, so in, 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 in the challenge of, uh, of, 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 of and for uh, the, the, the rights of the disabled, you, you know, you're, you're working with the Disability Council which you, which you lead, what are some of the key issues, what are some of the key interventions that we as a civil society you know, need to be aware of? Because uh, you know, we think, we tend to think that the issue of disability is one of, you know, building ramps and I have to apologize, there wasn't a ramp when you came in here. Uh, and, and, and to enable the, and, and, and to look at uh, the disabled in an empowering way, not to feel pity for them, but to see their strengths. And, and apart from the, the normal conventional responses, what are some of the fundamental issues that you would like to see addressed? You see, first of all, Everest that you spoke of, I wouldn't like to go to Everest for one reason, that I love to stand in a queue. <laughs> you know, I would hate to stand in a queue because when we climbed, there was one expedition at a time, there will be 50 at the moment, mm -hmm. you know. So one would hate to do it. But a lot of pe persons with disability are climbing, you know, the blind, you had double amputees, etc. that is there. Now coming to the, to the disability issue, I'm afraid our country has not done much. We talk of India making great strides. Okay, who is benefited the top part? But the low strata of society, those who are not so fortunate, uh, still remain the same. What kind and of the, figures are we talking and about? And we, we, uh, uh, we are talking about roughly 10% of the population, persons with disability, 10%. Now, we talk of inclusive society, that okay, education is one issue where every child should be allowed to go or m should be made compulsory, although it is there from age, uh, from day one to uh, age 18. But there are enough laws, but the implement implementation part does not take place. After all, education, if it goes up to the, uh, up to a, uh, uh, 18 years and then some technical education, etc., you would brighten their chances for employment. And the civil society has to come up also. I, I've got a number of people who are persons with disability working with me and they really work more than the normal man. Mm -hmm. But this does not go from our society. They probably, they will give them a, they, they will look at them either as beggars mm -hmm. or, you know, charity. Now this mindset has to go. 
from the people mm -hmm. you know if this mindset goes away and think as a inclusive society all these physical barriers and mental barriers they will all move and how might how might we begin to change these mindsets and there are people like you who are inspirations who are role models uh even for people who don't have disabilities uh you're an inspiration uh what what what, what, what are the mechanisms what can we say what can we do to change those mindsets uh, you know it's not enough just to say change your mindset people don't change mm -hmm. uh what are the kind of things that we can do to support you see uh, various people in various position can support them like for instance big corporate houses should say look i am going to make 3% or whatever it is um, number of seats available for them and uh, and he and he can set up or they the, the the corporate office can set up that these are the kind of people they require after all you don't require a special training for a say a telephone operator or a computer worker or or, or so and so so and so it is today the number of jobs that are not there the jobs must be made available to them because uh, if suppose the government takes and and has started doing it you educate them but if they are not going to get job then again the things will be there government in their own uh, psus and all have made it compulsory but outside they can't so the society has to come forward and and also if you meet a person with disability have a helping kind of attitude don't just look at him and stare at him because mm -hmm. you never know anything can happen to you also mm -hmm. so take it that way and i think every family has a person with disability and the and the family which has a person with disability don't hide him or her mm -hmm. just take them out mm -hmm. let them face the world let them also enjoy the life like others mm -hmm. let them play what a why, why it is so bring them out mm -hmm. because and fight for their right fight for mm -hmm. whatever the government has given so that they also like others are a part of the society mm -hmm. you won uh, an arjuna award padma shri padma bhushan mm -hmm. name recognition face recognition you grab the headlines uh you have achieved you have contributed so much to the welfare and happiness of others just to go back to the mountain image again i mean what other peaks are there left for you to climb well you see i'll just tell you that when i stood on the summit of everest now you know the feeling was that happy that the job well done but there was a tinge of sadness that you know i don't see anything higher to climb and all roads would lead down now that was one this thing but then when you came down you find that there are a number of other peaks to climb you see and and uh, every person in his life has to climb his own peak which is the mind and and how you climb that peak is what makes you makes your life and you as a person Thank you Major Alwali as I said you are truly a great inspiration <laughs> and this has been a great honor and a great privilege sir. thank you